Ramon Shari. I was doing my PhD with Klaus Hansen and Bob Langer as my advisors, and that's where we stumbled upon the whole squeezing concept, and we decided to start a company with it because we thought it was exciting, and Agustin joined, and currently I'm chairman of the board. We went to school together here. Yeah. So uh, we started in 2008. I started my master's, he started his PhD. We took the same classes, and then we did something called a practice school, where you go to a couple of different companies. One was in Siena in Italy, and one in Colorado, and that was pretty fun. We became pretty good friends, and that's where the whole thing started us, the two of us, pretty much. Yeah. So this is one of the cell squeeze chips. It squeezes cells, and we do it to deliver material inside cells, and we believe that once you can get stuff into cells, you can start to engineer them, and that could be useful for drug discovery or even therapeutics, and we're optimistic to try to use this to make the world a better place. <laughs> This project originated in Klaus Jensen's lab and when I was a grad student I really wanted to work on that. Uh, it wasn't squeezing at the time, it was something else, but I really wanted to work on that project and we asked Bob if he would want to collaborate on it and he's like, sure, it sounds like a nifty little thing you guys are trying to do, we'll, we'll do it together. And once we really got it going in Klaus's lab, I think that's where you know, Bob started to play a big role is once we had that initial proof of concept but we didn't really know what to go with, go, where to go with it, Bob really helped facilitate that interaction with other groups that had very exciting biological applications that we wouldn't have known about. Uh, and then working with other people in Bob's lab as well as with other collaborator collaborations that we developed around the area, it really helped push it forward. And I would say from a company perspective and all that, Klaus and Bob have both played a great role in supporting us and you know providing access to their networks. and. That has been really valuable both as far as the people it's brought and the advice that we're able to get in order to really help drive things forward. What we do is that we have, I don't know, let's call it three, three angles. The first one is for academics. So we feel that this technology enables a lot of things, a lot of things that we would probably as a company never be able to pursue because there's just so many exciting aspects that people have been wanting to look into. And so for that we provide access to academics to uh, use the platform for approved applications and work with it there. Um, in the more medium term, we feel there's a lot of potential in drug discovery because using our system you can potentially understand a lot of diseases better, identify new targets, and maybe even identify better drugs. And that's where we're starting to form partnerships with uh, pharma companies or biotechs to work with them on the technology. So it's not really just handing it over, but work with them uh, to develop out the potential and really help solve their problems and make better long-term solutions for drug discovery. And then the third angle is really the more therapeutic side where the dream is to, you know, for example, let's say you have cancer, could I take your immune cells out of your body, run it through one of our cell squeeze chips and deliver material that's going to train your immune cells against your disease and just put them back in. And so basically engineering your own immune cells to fight a disease for you which could inevitably be a lot more effective while also having less side effects. Right, right, right. And just one more comment there is that we own the exclusive license from MIT for any of those applications. So yeah. the research tool division was kind of the easiest way to start because you, you don't need that much money to get going. We had something that we could sell, we had that alpha prototype that was pretty raw, but early adopters, they don't care that much and they gave us great feedback to improve it. And that way you can develop all those applications and you can also know who the key players are in all those bigger areas. And it has been a great way to, to know who we want to partner with, both on the academic side and then on the company side of things. I think the, the company story is a good MIT story. And MIT has had like uh, some sort of impact in many phases. So the technology came out of MIT, out of Langer, Jensen, Labs, and Armand led that that development. But then when we started as a company, we also got some money from MIT Angels. And MIT Angels is this network of MIT alumni based in California that they typically like to invest in MIT startups, especially if Langer is involved. <laughs> and, and also the licensing office was great through this process. Like it was the first time we were doing this. Obviously. And, yeah, obviously. <laughs> and, it, we were thinking it was going to be painful and long, and it was not. It was a lot of like, it, it didn't feel like a negotiation, it felt more like... Handholding. <laughs> pretty 
<laughs> pretty much. And, but, but it's kind of, uh, and they would explain us why they were being nice to us. Like the idea is that MIT treats their inventors really nice because they've seen if, if they do that, then the inventors have all the passion to make this happen, which we do. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think it's a good idea, but there, there's so many MIT pieces. A lot of our guys in the team are coming from MIT and it's just a great place to be around here. All the pharma companies are just across the street. All the key partners academically are right here. So it's a, it's a good place to be.